Hello and welcome to Creative Vitality Jam Sessions. I have to start today with saying congratulations to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And I look forward to walking and moving together with you in unity. Here, we have intimate conversations with extraordinary dance and theater artists about reimagining creativity and supporting and building community. CV, JS, and I walk in solidarity and as allies for equality, justice, and respect. Black Lives Matter. I'm Helen Pickett, and today's guests are Marge Hendrick, a principal dancer, and Constant Vigier, first artist with the Scottish Ballet. We've known each other since 2013. Constant, and here they are. Hi. Hello. 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 Hi, guys. It's so good to see you. Nice to see you, too. It took so long to get here because I had to congratulate our new president and vice president elect. I'm so excited. You're the first guests that uh, are on the show after them. And it's, uh, it's very exciting days over here in the United States. So it's really great that you guys are here today. Um, how are you? Good, very good. Pretty yeah, good. thank you. Yeah. Good, good. So uh, we start with the first question always. What part of the world are you in? We're in Scotland, we're in Glasgow, because we're both um, dancers at Scottish Ballet. Right. We're both French. Sorry. Right, right. I, I, uh, your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> they know your dancers, which is awesome. And now they know your French. And that's awesome too. <laughs> um, I wanted to start with kind of a, just a little history. Um, you both trained in Paris. Uh, was it the same school? Yes and no. Um, it's, yeah, so um, we were in the same school when we were uh, so when I was 12 years old and Marge was 11 for a year, we went to the Conservatoire of Paris. Yeah. Uh, and then um, I joined Paris Opera Ballet School and Marge went to the Conservatoire National Supérieur okay. to dance in Paris. And 10 years later, okay. we met again at Scottish Ballet. <laughs> so that was my question, actually. You knew each other when you were 12 and 11? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so we were in the same class, and you know, at that age, you don't necessarily keep contact with each other. So we just lost touch. I mean, with Facebook, we kind of like knew a bit what was going on, but I had no idea he was coming to audition to Scottish Ballet. And one morning, he come he comes up at Scottish Ballet. And was like, oh, it's been ten years. <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny. I've known both of you since. Well, Marge, I've known you since 2013. So Constant, I also knew you at this time or did you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the funny thing is I never knew that you knew each other before. I didn't know that. So it's, that's really sweet. Um, um, Constant, I'll start with you. Um, <clears throat> you dance actually, and I didn't know this either, with Hamburg Ballet and at Tivoli before joining Scottish Ballet. And you've worked with many current, so living choreographers. Um, when did you know you wanted to choreograph? And besides the time of when you wanted to know, what was it that drew you to choreography? Um, so I think the big revelation uh, in a way was when I joined Hamburg Ballet School. Because um, after graduating from Paris Opera Ballet School, I didn't get into the company in Paris. So I joined uh, Hamburg Ballet School because we had performed Yandering by John Neumeyer then at the graduating show. And they had offered me a spot in their school should I not get any job. So that's what happened. And when I joined, it was uh, quite remarkable because the group of dancers there was so diverse from all around the world. And in Paris, it's quite, um, uh, well, it's, it's, it's mostly French people who, who study there. So it was quite uh, impressive to, yeah, to discover all these new cultures. And, um, and I think 
I discovered actually Joy Noemini's work there really, because I had known uh, the Lady of the Camellias and his most famous ballets, but I had no idea how big his repertoire was and how um, creative his voice was. And um, yeah, I think he, he made to me ballet really relevant and, and current. Uh, all the classic stories were believable and um, yeah, and I think I, I love the, um, the position of the choreographer in its relationship between the dancers, but also to the art form uh, to be able to, to study, research, uh, have um, yet yeah, taking taking in prospect the heritage and the, the history uh, and having something to say and and work with dancers, um, I think that's when I realized that position of of the choreographer in the room, but also within the art uh, form. I thought that's something that would interest me forever, really. Yeah, I agree. It's endless. It's endless. What 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 can what can I, I guess I say it this way this way it's endless what can what you can open up to yeah and then what can come to you because of that opening and um yeah i i totally i i hear you and i can really um relate to that as well as as to why i stay as yeah. a choreographer yeah and it's also the people for me yeah like you i know that you love coaching as well yeah it's great to um, work with him what? <laughs> It's great to work with him. I'm sure it's great to work with him. Also, you know, it must be fun because also for you, Constant, because when you know someone so well, right? You know where you can dig in and you guys know each other very well. And the two of you can also push each other yeah. and say yes or no to each other, which is so impo important to have not just the yes, but also the no. And uh, it must be very gratifying for the two of you to work together. You're lucky. Yeah. Have like a team like that. It's really beautiful. Um, Marge, so besides more years of dancing that you have, uh, you are interested also in acting, which I didn't know. You say that you have a crush on French cinema, so do I, uh, and you have taken acting classes in Glasgow. And why does acting, why does it pull you? And what is it about French cinema that is uh, so enticing? <laughs> Uh, so why acting? Um, I think because, you know, as dancers, we we put ourselves out there and we forget about ourselves. And that's what I love about ballet, about performing, is that I can just lose control a little bit and, and just like play a role or, um, yeah. And that really interested me. And I really wanted to take it to the next level mm -hmm. and and see how it feels to to actually speak uh to do it with other people that are not dancers that are not used to do it um and yeah that was also to because sometimes i'm not so comfortable with my english so i wanted to push that as well and um work on my pronunciation and my confidence mm -hmm. so that was one of the reasons also I thought it would be a good way to like compare both dancing and acting and maybe put it together and yeah and I learned that actually you're not playing someone else when you're like when you're acting you're actually it's you mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. sorry uh, I lost uh, the connection uh, it's you that you put out there and um, and yeah that's what interested me the most it's how you think about a situation think how you would react to something and then act it out and you I remember when we worked on the crucible together so it's based on a play so obviously there's so much acting in it and James Bonas came to help us 
to really get into characters. And everything he said was very much what I heard already in my acting classes, but that reminded me. And, and I thought it was so interesting to just like, yeah, just like merge the two things together uh, and make a great piece out of that. Um, and why French cinema? Ah, well, because French cinema, I, well, have been living in Glasgow for like eight years and I'm so like drawn to France and it's my, it's my home, it's uh, my mm. culture and I really love French culture and that watching French cinema just takes me back to French, the, just the French way of living things and, and the language. Um, I like reading, reading in French as well. Um, and I can relate to, to a lot of, of things, although I love other kind of cinema, but it's just, I can, I can really relate. And yeah, I like the bohemian slash chic style. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's so funny because <clears throat> when I was studying French in school, in high school, uh, my last teacher was fantastic. And one day a week, we always had French cinema day mm -hmm. and the classes were two hours. So we got to see amazing, but like he would always, it would it was a bit more historic, like Jules Le Gym, you know, these really iconic French films. And one of them, really made me fall in love with a place uh, called Nova Scotia. And it was actually l'histoire de l'Adèle Ash. The, it was the history of uh, Adèle Hugo, the daughter of Victor oh, yeah. Hugo, with yeah, Isabel yeah. John. God. When I saw this, I thought, oh, this is, and it, I mean, I'm non-French as you know, but it made me fall in love with exactly those things. The bohemian, the, the kind of, it's bohemian, but it's also very sensual. And that's what, I, that's what it felt like to me, you know, that there was this sensuality that wasn't, you didn't have to apologize for this amazing sensuality that I feel is in much of French cinema. And I think it also has to do with the language, that it is very soft and musical and kind. I always feel like French is like a cat. Mm. You know, it's this beautiful sensuality in the language. And I think as an American, that's why I fell in love because mm -hmm. it was different than yeah. what I was yeah. seeing, you know? And I think it had a great influence on world cinema. I really yeah. do, I really do. Um, Wait a minute, who's being interviewed? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think to hear your points as well. Well, thank you, Maus. You're always so diplomatic with me. You're so great. I still remember you as this 18 year old, young, beautiful girl who was so shy. And now it's so great to see you speak out. And it's just wonderful. Um, Constant. Now, this was really interesting, I found. I had no idea, again, I love hearing and reading the histories. In your childhood, you lived in Réunion for a while, yeah? And you did like extraordinarily many activities, rugby, tap dancing, horse riding, playing the drums, gymnastics. And then you only started ballet later when you returned, right, to France. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Do you think that all of these other activities contributed to how you create now? And the, the fact that you had all of this other imaginative stuff already in your being of trying all these different things, do you think that it, it did influence how you create? Um, I have an opinion about it after seeing some of your video films, which are so good. And do you think it also, influenced how you dance and how you view dance. So as a dancer and as a creator. Um, as, a dan as a dancer, um, I think it, yes and well, probably. Um, I'm not really sure about um, the answer in a way. Um, I think as a dancer, uh, 
I somehow forgot a little bit about all these, all these different parts within me at some point. Um, I think especially being trained at Paris Opera, um, where it's quite strict, and I really loved that, uh, the fact that it was strict. I loved all the rules. Um, I loved playing by the rules and being a very good student and stuff. And I'm learning now slowly that it's actually nice to also uh, breathe and just do your own things. And that if it's not perfectly by the rule, uh, um, it can be interesting as well. And um, actually, I, I think as a dancer, the journey was to discover how different uh, and different things can feed you. Um, because when I joined Hamburg Ballet, we were only working with uh, John Neumeyer. And I thought, wow, that's incredible. We can go really deep into that style. And, and I wish I had stayed there a bit longer. And yet when I see how many things I've done at Scottish Ballet and how many different choreographers we get to work with, I'm quite happy that it happened because um, I, think it, I think it's very fulfilling as well to discover new styles and, and to work with different people, different ways. And that brought me back to my childhood in a way where, oh, there was many things happening at the same time. And, and as a choreographer now, I also feel like drawn to having different careers in a way and that, well, I would not say I've been very successful so far, but um, Sorry. It, it's, um, I think, to, <laughs> to maybe, because I think I would love to choreograph for big companies on stage, um, but Passions. having, sorry? Patience, patience. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but actually right now with the lockdown and everything, to have worked with videos and, 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 and cameras and uh, in different ways, I think it's very interesting as well. And, and I go back to this, oh, maybe I would love to do some um, music videos, uh, some advertising, some more ballet dance film. Uh, and I, I feel like everything feeds every other project. And um, like someone like Cher Kawi with a, such a varied career, I think it's, it's quite fascinating as well. Um, so I think, yeah, that childhood maybe uh, created that uh, interest in many things that I refined slowly. <laughs> yeah, curiosity. Exactly. Yeah. It's the curiosity. I think that also, I think that's underestimated. I think you didn't say it, but, but it's good that March did because I think you know, it sounds like you were a very curious child to try all these different things. Yeah. And that curiosity, sometimes, now I agree with you, I love the rules of ballet, I love ballet technique, but my personality was different. I learned breaking the rules very early and it wasn't always great to, you know, I had to learn how to back off a little bit, you know, and it was okay to play by the rules. But I think that sometimes I find you a very curious person also in the studio, the way I, I see you watch. And I think maybe it's like uncovering that curiosity for you again, to let yourself, there's, I have this rule, if you're not hurting anybody, break the rules. If you're not hurting yourself or anybody else, the rules are made to be broken. You have to know them. You have to know your ballet technique. You have to know the boundaries and then crack them. And uh, it's good to hear you say that, you know, that, that this is becoming more part of your reality. And you have, you know, a rebel right next to you. She's wonderful. <laughs> I was a very like... <laughs> no, 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 I know that because I knew you when you were young, but you have it, you have this rebellious quality in you. I see it. Yeah, and I see yeah, it might quite like it outside the studio. Yeah. I love it. It's great. Oh my gosh, guys. We need to sit down and have drinks. Okay. So I was a very sensible child. Were you? And teenager. And as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Marge, you um, as a principal dancer, you actually have had uh, the chance to dance uh, quite a few roles. 
Um, and this winter, you travel to Ballet West um, with Adam Sklutz, who's going to be on here um, in January on the program. Um, you danced two lead roles. I know you had one injury, but you were, um, and I, but beyond the injury, how was it dancing at Ballet West? Well, basically the first time living in the United States, right? And it's a very beautiful area where you were nature wise. Um, what aspects of this experience made you grow and how, how was it to be there? It was quite incredible. I, I, I'm afraid to like speak for like hours <laughs> about the experience. But um, yeah, I was pretty nervous because you, the challenge for me was the two different roles I was going to dance, Martha and Giselle, the queen of the Willis and Rubies uh, of Balanchin. So yeah, I was so excited about it, but I was also pretty nervous. I was getting, going into a new environment. I didn't know if I, if, if I was legitimate there, if I was, if my work was going to be valued and if, you know, you're always kind of scared of judgment. Um, so I got there and it was just, it was just an incredible experience. Everyone was lovely. Uh, it was a different city. Um, I have to say, uh, Salt Lake City is nothing like any kind of city in Europe. <laughs> so I have to like get used to it. <laughs> but hopefully I could walk everywhere. Uh, they found me like a great apartment. Um, and some dancers would like just like give me a lift somewhere or take me to the mountains around. So it was right in the middle of winter, so obviously I couldn't ski or do anything like this, which is Salt Lake City is quite a face, famous spot for that. Um, so I would have loved, I want to be back, say that to Adam <laughs> I want to be back uh, during the spring or the summer <laughs> so that I can, <laughs> so that I can, uh, I can see the mountains and go hiking. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, on the dance experience, um, the challenge was great um, and I could feel that my work was valued there, that I had, I had my place there and that everyone was appreciative of that. So I was really appreciative of that too. And yeah, and then unfortunately the first show of Mertha on stage, I, I partially tore my calf. So uh, yeah. Uh, I had to uh, finish the dancing um, and it was a pretty traumatizing experience, but uh, like it, it's, it's part of the dancer's life, uh, being injured. And I've, I've never experienced such a, um, such a big one, like such, such a sudden one uh, on stage. Like it's, it's, it's quite a lot to, to go through. <laughs> Um, and it's like a dream is crashed, like suddenly I was looking forward to this experience so much. And, but I learned so much about myself because uh, the, two weeks later, there was the show of rubies. And I was like, I want to do this. There's no way I'm not going to do this. Uh, and it was only just partially tall. So um, with the help of physios and dancers being so supportive, the staff, the creative um, staff so supportive as well. I managed to get back kind of like to ballet class in like one week. Good. And then the next week was the week, the rehearsing week. Uh, so good thing I did my homework before uh, I came, I learned the whole um, Ruby solo and the music was ingrained in my body and my and my brain so i just had to to just go for it and the next week it was still painful but i pushed and and i got to know my body i was like i was really scared i was like oh am i gonna like tear it again or so i really tried to be as listening to my body as much as 
knowing where to push and where to hold back and how to like pace myself to get to the show. So that was a really interesting uh, process. Uh, and everyone was so supportive. Uh, yeah, I, I can't thank the dancers and the staff there enough. Like it was, they made it so much better as well, like the experience. Yeah, that's so, a great yeah. company. I'm so happy you got to go there. Um, and I actually don't have to tell Adam because you just said it, that you want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> in spring awesome okay so awesome. i will tell him it has to be spring <laughs> or the fall oh the fall it's also yeah beautiful. fall fall could be good apparently the colors are beautiful at that time <laughs> yeah. um constant so um i want to talk a little bit about your films but i just have two more questions before we get there um, you sew and you create costumes, I read. Um, you've also taken cinema and theater intensive at the Cours Florent in Paris, and you started dance films during this period as well. So you've also been quite busy, which is great. You found other ways, which was what the show's about, to reimagine yourself, um, which is fantastic. Um, so, you know, these three forms of art, how are they now going to fit into you? I mean, it's kind of obvious about the sewing and the costuming, but how, you know, are you taking now, did you take the theater and cinema intensive to learn more about making dance films? Um, not at all, actually. Um, I took the, um, I took the summer course as, a, as an option of, would I actually like to be an actor? Oh. Um, and actually, it just uh, reminded me of how much I would love to be part of the culture scene uh, in France, but actually all over the world is even better. <laughs> um, and so basically, yeah, to, to get to create stuff to put on stage and um, to put out there in the end. Um, so the, the acting experience was great. And I was actually surprised that the result of it didn't, want, didn't make me want to be an actor, but to be, to be a creator more than an actor. Um, and then the sewing happened because I tried to save money on making costumes for my pieces whenever I would get opportunities. Um, and this is now getting a bit more into the maybe more fashion world than the costume making. Um, even though this morning I struggled three hours on a pocket. <laughs> he, he made me like three dresses and they're amazing. Uh, and I want to keep being your model because- <laughs> I was gonna say you have a perfect model. It's this like tall, beautiful yeah. woman. Yeah, no, to be working with dancers is is amazing like um, if there is no deadline I can do something okay uh, but I, I, I'm still taking quite some time to, to manage. But, so what's the uh, question? Were some of those dresses in the film that you guys did together? No. No. But no I'm, I'm working on, an, on, a, on a project at the moment with uh, five women from the company uh, and so I've had done three outfits for three people and I'm finishing the last two. Uh, and that's one of the pockets that I struggle with <laughs> this morning. Um, and hopefully that will be a, a, a dance film. Um, because I kind of realized that, um, yeah, videos were another outlet um, and that I could, um, create with, without asking for an opportunity or needing an opportunity. Um, so yeah, to create the opportunities for myself instead of waiting for them. Um, obviously the level of, of um, production is still low because it's self-financed and it's small projects, but um, it's, um, I basically took this time in the lockdown actually to kind of uh, build a showreel that would be um, 
to good quality, I hope. Um, and it kind of went quickly because before the lockdown, really, I had never worked with a, a phone or a camera for dance and edited not much either. Um, and actually, I've worked with Jamil from the company as well on these square videos. Um, and it's helped so very much um, with the editing. And so, yeah, I think it can it can become an exciting project. And, and as I said before, like, I think if now I have a few opportunities to work on video, um, hopefully one day there will be other outlets. And if it's the stage, if it's um, a fashion show, if it's an ad, if it's a, a concert with a, with Christine and the Queens, we never know. Um, but so yeah, it's um, it's very much out there for now, and and trying to push as many doors as possible. Yeah, yeah. I just um, I loved the film that you and Marge did together. This was, I mean, I liked all of your film. I have to honestly, I really did. I really Thank thought you. they were all there was what was I found so brilliant was there was this, this simplicity made it brilliant like like you took the scene the bumblebee and what was so beautiful is that it was of course yellow and black but it wasn't forced it was just yellow and black and it was the flight of the bumblebee and people could take the rest how they wanted to but the fact that it moved so quickly you know, between the squares also gave it so much movement and make, made it fly and flitter around. And then you're, you know, well, I mean, I have a, another question for Marge, but actually let's let's talk about this, this film that you did together. Yeah. So Marge, how was that for, you know, working on this film with Coastal? So there's, um, there's one we did during lockdown where we um, decided to like just uh, do it in one of the, the alley outside of yeah. flats uh, so to keep it safe and, <laughs> and, and fun and have more space. So, I mean, Constant will talk about the idea a bit better, but it was the idea of being able to like uh, go, I, I was able to go out while another couple was stuck in and like struggling. It was so, um, so weird and wonderful, that couple inside. Mm -hmm. I would, first of all, I was like, what am I looking at? But they were so, it was so good. It was the juxtaposition. Those two, I mean, I don't know how you thought of that, Constant, but that, that was like, like, it really got the feeling like, well, the lockdown has made them go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have this free spirit of Marsh. Yeah, so, but actually that was quite good because, so Constant had quite a clear, he always has clear ideas, so that's, that's why it's good to work with him because uh, you don't have, you have a clear vision and you just follow his vision and you, you can talk about it and discuss and maybe change a few things. So, so yeah, no, that was interesting and he had the choreography ready and Personally, uh, selfishly, it was so good to just move and dance. It been like been so long since we were like doing a, a bar in the kitchen, and just just him making him making me move on, on in the streets uh, with some like good music. Uh, I felt really grateful, and. Um, and yeah, and it was actually also, as you said, like I was, uh, we presented the free spirit. So playing it with ca the camera as well and, um, and having that, yeah, interpreting that freedom was quite liberating as well. One thing about um, film is that if you're uncomfortable in front of it, it shows very clearly and that's something I felt that you were so comfortable in front of the camera, Marge. It but also, uh, he was holding the camera, so oh, perfect. I'm comfortable with him, so yeah. I was just trying to forget about the camera, you know, and and just think I was doing it to constant. Yeah. You know. But so actually, for I, I, sorry, what? No, no, I was gonna say like as as you said earlier, to be comfortable enough with a friend to say yes, no, or maybe. 
I think, uh, especially March having, I think, a night for camera, uh, her knowledge in in in, in films and everything. Yeah. Um, I think to be that comfortable and and really open the door to suggestions or actually sometimes not even to, but to face a rebel is good sometimes when you <laughs> want to go for it and, and actually you have a, mm, I don't like this, can we try something else? And I, I often give the option and then if I really don't like it, then I would have, well, get on with it, sorry for this time. <laughs> but um, to be that comfortable with someone is great because in the end, like the ego is out of the door and, and we are just trying to make the, the project as interesting as possible. Um, and that exchange happened at every level of the choreography, the angles, but also the editing afterwards. So yeah, yeah, but to have a, um, an opinion when, when you can't decide or, so I think it's, um, yeah, it's great. It was a nice experience for sure. Yeah, Constant made the first, like editing and then he showed me and then we were we were I give I gave feedback and we were discussing what could work better. Yeah. Well it's great, you know, uh I you know how much I believe in collaboration with the pieces that I've also made with you two in uh in Scottish ballet and to have a partner that you trust like this and also, I say it again, it's not just a partner that says yes. No, no, exactly. It's a partner that you feel comfortable, that you know, and this was something you said that's very true, that no doesn't have a root in ego. That no has the root in what is the best thing for the yeah. product that you that's just constructive made. constructive feedback, really. Exactly. And actually that whole film, because um, we, we are four friends, basically, Rambo and Claire, who were stuck in their flat, um, and, and Marge and I are really good friends. And I think we had that safe space. Just say it and, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do have to say, I know the four of you also quite well. And, you know, we worked pretty intensely on the Crucible together. And I would say that, you know, unless this was another life. I've never lived with the four of you. And I felt that all of you would were completely open to the situation because we all know the crucible is not an easy story. It's, I, I don't mean um, easy to tell. I mean, it's emotionally hard story. And um, I felt all four of you were very, very open to the possibility of being ugly as well. And that's so important to art. You know, it's not, it's not, I mean, yes, I believe that beauty, the beauty of, of art also heals, but art is also responsible to put a mirror up and say, this is also who we are. And um, I know there is like the four of you, it's so beautiful that, that you have this relationship also artistically, but it's, it's also like, coming from the outside, I don't have this intimate relationship and I still find the four of you very open. Mm -hmm. So perhaps your relationship has also helped you have more air with, with people in the studio that you don't know so well. Do you think that's true? That's, that's very true for Scottish Ballet. It's a company where there's tr trust and there's friendship and so there's a good atmosphere in the studio. So that frees people. Um, um, yeah, I think there's no fear of judgment in Scottish ballet. Uh, and, and some like making fun of something or taking the piece of something is some, sometimes helpful to, to just like get it out. Because if people are too, you know, too stuck up, then there's nothing coming up. Of well, them. you know how much we laugh in the studio, so. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah and, and coming from you as well, like, because, because you you put us on the spot and you really push us to the limit, so. so but that's, then we can have a laugh. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> it's really heavy and then we laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you work that way, Constant, also in the studio when you're working? Um, 
I, I'm not sure, actually. I think I've, to be honest, I've never touched such a, a deep matter as the crucible is. Um, but I, I don't know if I'm actually very friendly in a way. Uh, I'd say you're very, he's very like positive and like encouraging and uh, yeah, when I've seen constant work, you're, you're very professional actually, but very positive and encouraging and, um, and efficient. There you go, Conso. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, beautiful. Marsh, uh, you've also been studying Pilates. So you're trying, you're, you're studying to get your teacher's certificate. Um, do you think this is a direction you want to go after? Um, or is it just like something else to study now? It's, it was, uh, it came from the desire to, to yeah, like um, do a good use of my time and learn something new. Uh, but I also taught a few classes during lockdown online and I never, ballet classes, and I'd never done that before and actually really enjoyed it. It took me quite a while to prepare the class and everything because I wanted to do it right. But um, yeah, I really enjoy um, seeing people, even if it was on Zoom, but and and trying to just pass on the knowledge. So doing Pilates, I knew the technique before I started the course, uh, and I just wanted to have some some more tools to to be able to teach and and deliver uh, a session. So I'm like. Halfway through, I'd say, uh, it's, it's actually quite, quite hard, just the material is there, but it's just um, making it, um, yeah, uh, um, building a class that makes sense and then delivering it. And so, yeah, and then later on as a transition, I'm not so sure if I want to do that full time because I don't know. Uh, I might have to act. Yeah, I might. I might want to become an actress. I might want to study because actually, I really like studying. There's a few theory things about Pilates, like anatomy, and yeah, uh, a little bit about all of that. And I really like studying those kind of things too. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind going back into study studying. I know what's gonna happen. Like 10 years from now, I'm gonna be traveling in France. I'm gonna need a doctor. I'm gonna walk in and it's like, Marsh? <laughs> <laughs> or, or a psychologist. I was thinking of psychology oh, as well. Nice. <laughs> Acting is all about psychology. Uh, you know, so it's just, I think it's an interesting, uh, an interesting thing to have. Uh, under my belt and see what I want to do with it. And it's great for dancers as well. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, dancing is also psychology. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and do you find that actually, Constant, do you find that you, do you use that kind of, that, that tool, psychology in your, in your, as a choreographer? Um, I think at first, I, that's also what I, I, I loved in being a choreographer, is trying maybe to tell stories and, um, and, and in doing that, just the atmosphere in a studio, how people react to certain matters and how people are, behave the opposite way. Um, and yeah, I think somehow, I think my choreographic voice became a bit more modern uh, recently and with more concepts or ideas than just a storyline. Mm. Um, but like I, I've, I have a few ballets like written with, uh, with the, the whole, uh, the score and everything, but, and there was like um, uh, Coco Chanel is someone that I, I find fascinating. And, and to be able to, 
to bring someone on a journey that uh, bring that needs emotion and understanding of a character. I think it's fascinating, and I think that's what I loved when we worked with you and James Bonas on on the Crucible. Is um, yeah, the psychology of the characters, and yeah, I think that's fascinating. And yet, sometimes you have to bring that in stuff that are maybe storyless. Um, mm -hmm. But to have these, whenever you create, I, I would bring some images at some point and okay, we, it's not maybe obvious to the audience, but at that time we are trying to say this or maybe feel it this way as if you were on that journey or, so I think psychology, as you said, is, is there for sure. Yeah, I mean, I really believe that, I mean, art is just an extension of the person. So the more of the person that you can get, you know, the more, yeah. the more the audience can relate. Yeah. But then the fascinating thing as well in the studio is the physicality of how do you get someone to, to push harder or to suffer a bit more to then go on the next level and, and to, to, to say, okay, it's okay if you are making a mistake, like we are, we are here together. So let's, let's get each other better than we were before instead of, oh yeah, but I think it's because I was doing this. It doesn't matter, like just try again and, and we'll, we'll find out, but there is no, there is no blame in, in having made a mistake. And I, I think that's really what I enjoy. And when I watch a rehearsal and when you see people react to um, whether it's, criticism. yeah, to criticism, sometimes you feel like people feel attacked and, and that should not be the feeling like, exactly. again, yeah. it's always how you deliver and how it's received. But I think a re, uh, in a rehearsal, the goal should just be to be as good as possible and not, oh, you've done that wrong. Well, that's bad. I'm, yeah, make, make me better. Uh, I'm all for that. But, and then as, as a receiver, then you should not feel like, um, I, I think it's the, an ego thing, but um, we should not feel attacked because in the end, the more corrections we get, the better we'll be. Um, yeah, I think it's ego, but I think it's also, you know, ev everybody has their different kinds of insecurity. Yeah. Yeah, insecurity. So it's also the walls that we put up because of fear. And then what you said is so true, how, you know me, you know that I don't really, I don't believe in like the, um, I don't believe in the, in the mean kind of, um, you know, pushing down. I always believe that you get the best out of people through it's going to be work. I mean, you know me, but I, you know, it's, it's, it's work, it's hard, but it's always like, okay, well, I know you're having, you know, it's hard, but we've got to keep going. So, um, yeah. It, you know, you said it at the beginning, it's endlessly fascinating. Mm -hmm. And it, cause human beings are endlessly fascinating. And that is the joy of being an artist, Marge, and being a creator, right? Yeah. Um, it's really fun talking to you two. Um, so these three questions are for everybody. Uh, each of you, maybe a little bit uh, like just one. I know there are many. I have to say that to everybody. But can you share a favorite or impactful memory? Uh, one, one, one memory. Like I say, I know there are many, but uh, Marge, I'll start with you. Okay. I think, I think my promotion to principal was my best memory, to be oh. honest. And it was not so long ago. It was last winter. And, um, and the best thing about it is that it was unexpected. Uh, it was after a show. It was on stage. It was a Sunday afternoon. Like, who's going to promote anyone on a Sunday afternoon? Christopher Harrison, because he's awesome. <laughs> and it was with my partner at the same time. I said my, my partner, my dance partner, Evan um, 
Louden. Uh, I always dance with him because I'm, I'm a tall dancer and I can't dance with Constant, for example. <laughs> well, uh, I would like to do that. Yeah, on the comedy duets we did. Um, but yeah, so I always dance with him. We have such a great working relationship. We just listen to each other. He's just amazing. <laughs> I just, I, 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 I can never complain. He just feels me. He, he's yeah. a great lover. Yeah, he's so, I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but he's so listening sure. to, um, to me and to my movements and to where I am. And so I, I can just trust him like so much. So Wait, weren't you two, didn't I put you two together in Trace? Um, no, no, we, because he was oh, no. in the company. Who was uh, with Trace? I was with Owen Thorne, he left the company. Oh, but... yes, of course. Yeah. Well, I was also quite an intense partner, but with Eve, I spent much more time with him, working with him and... Yeah. And we got promoted at the same time on stage. And well, it was quite unbelievable. And uh, we hugged on stage and we could, could just feel like the, how grateful we were, we were for ourselves, but also for each other and how proud of each other we were. Uh, so that was for, for a moment, we were just not on stage anymore. We were just like the two of us just like, <laughs> you know. And Constant? Oh, um, I think it's um, when I think the fa my favorite program we have, we've ever done at Scottish Ballet was the um, uh, where I felt like the whole company was. Um, Together on stage, it's when we did Emergence by Crystal Tight. And before that, the, the show opened with um, This Is My Body, Ceci est Mon Corps by uh, Angelin Prege Locage. Yeah, I, I saw the program. And oh, it was going to be one of my favorite memories too, really? when we did it in London. But you yeah. have yeah. one. Now it's console. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 pick, I pick this one then. And I, th and I think that's, that's um, when ballet becomes a, like really becomes a, a team thing. Because uh, yes, you have moments where you want to be more for you and uh, like solos are, are nice. But um, this moment or it was so different, those two pieces, like um, this is my body is not a physical, it is physical, but it's so much more emotional than than physical, I think. It, it was um, a journey, like, uh, it was such a ritual. Uh, and then to finish with um, Emergence, where we were all on stage finishing with this port de bras and everyone was doing the same. And I don't know, I think it's a, it was a very, very intense and um, beautiful feeling of wow, I'm happy where I am and I'm glad my family was at this show and that we share this art with the world. Can I just say one thing? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> because the, the first piece is just men. It's just men on stage. Oh, I saw and, the program in London. And then we got all together in Emergence and I remember every single show I would go into the wings and watch, I'd never do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and watch the men just perform like incredibly and and that would put me in the mood for the the next bit mm -hmm. even though they were like completely different pieces but yeah I, I just yeah I, it was just so incredible to watch them on stage uh performing that piece yeah. oh, beautiful um okay this is also for both of you um so uh, in, in building a more inclusive community, yeah, a, a community in our dance world that feels like, 
you know, people are represented. It's not just a certain kind or, or whatever, building more equality, more equity. What is, I know many things have to change, but for both of you, what is one thing that you think is very important that can be a shift for our community? And Consto, I start with you this time. Education, I would say. Yeah, of course. Um, I think, yeah, to, to maybe break the, the cliches, I think, because uh, once we are in it, we never feel that these cliches are relevant and yet these cliches exist. So I feel like to, because as soon as there is a uniform and there is rules, it's always, it feels like a, an, a forbidden count, like a forbidden place to, to, to be. Um, and I feel like, yes, we have tides and yes, we have to, to really be, um, yeah, to, 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 to pay attention to what the details are and everything. And yet it can be so much fun. And I think it's, it's ballet can still be seen as a, as a very strict art form. Um, and yet I think we see more and more that uh, these strict plays are bringing creative that are from total different backgrounds that used to break the rules. And, and I think if that could be maybe brought in sooner um, to everyone, um, whether it's to have a bit more flash mobs in the street. Uh, I don't know if it's the companies to do that or the schools or, but that ballet is one way of moving, but actually it's, it is fed by every other way of movement and that it can help you move in any other way as well. Um, so I think not to see ballet as the ending uh, product maybe. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. Mar? Yeah, I agree with that. And I'd say just to make it available to every everyone, like it's just, it can be such an elite thing. And and some people might think, oh, this is not for me, or I could never afford it, or you know, um and that there's this great charity, uh, I don't know if you know, it's called the What Dance Can Do. And they, they just bring ballet and dance to like vulnerable children in the world. Um, and so yeah, making people aware that it's there and, 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 and as, as dancers to, to just feed ourselves the, as much as possible and feed each other. And now we, we can travel, I mean, not anymore at the moment, but there's globalization, we can travel the world. Let's take a choreographer from here and there and just share our knowledge and, and just open our horizons and not just stick to, to our French tradition or, you know, uh, there are great choreographer from France. Uh, there's a great history of ballet, but there's so much more, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that's yeah. Beautiful. Um, well, this has really, really been fun. I, I always say part of the big fun about having these conversations is actually getting to talk to, to keep the connection open during this time to so many, um, so many of. So many friends, it's just, I really love, you know, that's uh, talk about ego, you know, but it's really like, it's, it's about supporting my friends and getting them out there. So people, more people know about them and you, but it's also just having the chance to talk again and to know, to get to know each other more. So um, thank you so much for your openness and uh, inspiration actually for this, this conversation. Um, do you, do either of you, do both of you have a website or if not, what is your Instagram tag handle? That, so people could find out about you more. So I have a website, um, okay. www.constantvigier.com. 
Um, I also have my Instagram, c.vigier, B-I-G-I-E-R. And yeah, I think, yeah, that's it. Good. Yeah, I have an Instagram. I think it's March Kendrick, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> no, I think it is. Or oh, if it's not March Hendrick, it's M. Hendrick. Um, there we go. <laughs> But well, no. so there is also uh, everybody who's watching, there is a short bio from each of these uh, human beings in the description box below the video. So you'll be able to find out a bit more about them. And you can always go to scottishballet.uk to find out more about them as well and to find out about the Scottish Ballet because it's a really uh, extraordinary company. Um, we have two new guests every week and um, our next interview is with uh, a friend of mine, Bobby Briscoe, who, who is an independent dancer and choreographer now living in Germany. And now the thanks. Thank you, Gracie. Uh, you know how much you do for this show and how much you mean to me. So thank you so much, my dear girl. Thank you, dance community. Uh, we're a pretty amazing community, to, you know, just... I think you're the 43rd interview now and every single interview, it's amazing. I, dancers, choreographers, the dance community is just beautiful. I love how we support each other, so thank you. And thank you again to you too. Um, it was really, really fun. And let's keep reimagining creativity. Yes, yeah. hopefully see you soon, huh? Thank Bye. you so much for having us. Of course. Bye. 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 -bye.